Alright y'all, so, I replayed it. Here I am! I'm back at the, uh... The bar. Let's hope it doesn't crash this time. Oops, wrong button. <sighs> it never used to be this difficult to get a drink. Another thing that wretched Dolmagus is responsible for. Confound him, and confound this curse! He's responsible for making it's it hard to get drinks. Really suffering. Turned into a horse just when she was betrothed to be married. Mm. No, you're back already. That was unduly expedient of you. So, have you found out where Dulmagus is? Heck no. What was that? I thought I heard the deer. I can hear her also. Guess I should have known better. People round here don't care where you come from. They care about what you come with. Of course. Are you saying some mini hammer crook from this slum has kidnapped my daughter? Mini hammer crook? Oh, keep your hair on, Granddad. Whoever it was can't have gone far. They'll still be in town somewhere. Well, we must find them then. Forget everything else. Getting Medea back is all that matters. See, this is what should drive a video game plot. Well, Personal matters. What are you waiting for? Instead you of collecting me, pick items or whatever. We must find the culprit immediately and save my precious daughter. Woohoo! Wow. Alrighty. Well, now that uh, we're back in unknown territory. It's gonna be me walking around lost for about five minutes. Mm-hmm. Let's go down as well. Gosh, why am I thinking that button is A? Wow, this is a cool well. Wow, what a really cool guy in this well. That sucks. Wow. That's neat. Where am I? This is so cool. I love this. Welcome to Pick'em's Secret Club. Wow! I'm so excited! It's the Secret Club! Is this a giant sloth pelt? Giant... It looks like a giant sloth pelt. Wow. Secret club. Even in a dirty old like picking. Watching your H's. Pet eel in the secret sun. It's kind of gross. I like this place. Hmm, I wonder if this will be important. Right now, just kind of a neat little secret I found. But, it doesn't look like it's important right now. Maybe it'll never be. It's kind of not the point, I guess. So I'm starting the uh, the slime more more dragon quest. Let's play out, guys. I'm thinking that I will do those like every um. Tuesday, Thursday, and do this game every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's cool. Cool. I might cut out me being lost. Hmm. 
See what I did first. My brother. So I was like posing for Carlos, like, man, I love Dragon Quest. And when I got my R4, I put like a Dragon Quest game on there. But the first one I played was Dragon Quest Monsters Joker, because I'm like, oh, I play the Monsters games. And in and in uh, my class, I was like, I don't really care about Dragon Quest. It's like kind of boring. That's what I said. That's what I said. And. I said, I only play these games because I like the design of the monsters. I'm gonna start looking at houses, guys. I'm gonna skip ahead. So don't worry, I'll cut this video. Actually, look, a dwarf. I'll cut it after here, because look, there's a dwarf in this town. Usually in RPGs, I would do this anyway. But now it's like part of the story, I gotta do this. Yo, so Dragon Quest 1 is real cool, it's uh, it's just one-on-one -on -one battles, so, like, it's just, it's pretty much, I don't I didn't really find it annoying, it's just like, oh, attack, heal, magic when it's necessary, it's, there's not that many menu buttons pressed through, and it was pretty great, there's a lot of puzzles in that game that involve just walking, um, through and little pass like in the like okay it was really unique actually so the towns that you entered like they had borders and if you walk past those borders you were out of town right a lot but a whole bunch of puzzles in Dragon Quest 1 revolved around walking around the very edge of the town without like leaving town it was pretty fantastic it's pretty fun I love it a whole lot. There's never any like blind, you know. I mean, nothing's no, nothing's really a trick. I mean, I guess you could call it a quote unquote a trick, but. <laughs> Dragon Quest One's real cool, and at the end of the game, all the poisonous swamp and stuff it turns into flowers. And you get to walk around and talk to everyone in the world, and they all have something new to say. It's pretty great. They do that in Earthbound too. That's probably where Earthbound got the idea from. It's pretty great. I like it a lot. It's great. They like it. It's great. I like it. Oh. I didn't think about doing this. An axe! Okay.
Dragon Quest 2 is also real cool. Dragon Quest 2, you have three party members, but it starts off with just the one with one party member who has no magic. All physical attacks. This is pretty cool because then it, it sort of forces you to play on just your strengths and your own. And like your own. Uh, your ability to judge when you need to use medicinal herbs to heal. So, so it's not all blind attack win unless you grind a whole bunch, you know. Because there's just enough enemies to overpower you that it becomes pretty difficult early on. But you can still win. Okay, Red Alchemy. You can still win those battles. Because you're, you're pretty strong. You can't attack the entire enemy team at once, however. Not until you get your own partners. So yeah, you never learn a look of magic. And it's real cool and when you get your first partner. He's he's like this paladin. And he's just like sleeping in some town and you wake him up it's like, yeah we gotta go save the world. So you do that and you go save the world together. And uh, he's like pretty much the strongest character. Because he learns a lot of strong powerful moves. But he also learns healing magic, and he has high defense. Like, this, the powerful moves I'm talking about, like, uh, what's it called? Defeat and stuff. They kill things in one hit. So, random battles become way more manageable with that. And then finally, you get your, um, your other cousin. She's been turned to a dog, and you have to revert her back. And she's your mage of the group. And then you can just do big area damage. And it's great. This dog's whimpering. Aha! So two is really hard though. Um, I don't remember any knowing puzzles. The dungeons are pretty cool. The dungeons are like uh, what's this guy's problem? The dungeons are like you know, like Lost Woods kind of dungeons, but they're not that bad. Um, I'm, I mean, maybe that makes it sound like blind guessing, trial and error, but it's actually really fun. I enjoyed it. You know, he's, he's probably in the casino. Let me talk to y'all about casinos, okay? Yuji Hori? He's a gambler. So, um, Yuji Hori, in the first Dragon Quest, there's only one save, right? It's in the very beginning of the game, the king. He's like, go off on your adventure, save the world from the dragon place. But, uh, but he's the only way you can save. And the world's huge. Right? So there you go. Already, you can't understand what happens. One step out away from the king is another step you have to take back. So you have to keep going on larger and larger adventures. And eventually... Eventually, you're like, man, it's kinda hard. I, I kinda like, wanna save, but I'm almost to the next town. I can, I can make it to the inn, right? Oh, I found him! He's in this dump! 998, 999, 990, uh, oh yeah, a grand, sweet. He knows his stuff, that old merchant. He can see how much it was worth. I think you I know, love my face. a piece of cake. 
Easy dust, mates, eh? Easy dust. <laughs> Hey, who, who's that? Oh no, you ain't the owner of that horse, is ya? So, it was you. You're the scoundrel responsible for taking the princess. Oh, uh, what the hell? Get that monster away from me. What's it on about? What princess? I only knocked off a horse. Who are you calling a monster? Give my Medea back right now, or suffer the consequences. Hey, easy, take it easy, I swear. I didn't know. I didn't know there was no monster princess or nothing. No, yeah, I have knows. it all. This is all the dough I've got for it, I swear. Just don't hurt me. What? You sold my daughter? That's it. Slay this worthless wastrel. Slay him. Hold your horses, Granddad. Sorry, I mean, take it easy. This tow rag ain't good enough for the guv's sword. All right, you. Let's hear it. Sell it down Beggar's Alley, did ya? To old Dodgy Dave, eh? Yeah, 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 that's it. Know him, do ya? You? you can kind of gesticulate where he's going because of... That's, uh... That's... Everyone in the town was talking about it. Right then. And over the door. If I find out you've been telling me bogeys, you're brown bread. Do you hear? Oh, look, I've been lying, mister. I swear. Here, a thousand gold pieces. That's what he give me for it. No need to worry. The black market geyser he was talking about is a mate of mine. Oh. He'll give us back the horse princess if we give him back the dough. I mean money. Sure. Then why are we dallying around here? We must go to this geezer's shop immediately. We're so nice. Oh, is that what they call this place? <laughs> you suck, Angela. I like having Troy follow me around. I wish everyone followed me around. So, Dodgy Dave, I'm assuming he's the uh, bartender. I really think it's like pretty humorous that this guy's like, pay me 10 coins, or you won't pass. And then either you can wait till nighttime like this, or can you just go around this other alleyway? It's really not that difficult. There's so many ways to get around. It's rather funny. Meow, Isis. So, yo, here we are. Oh, come on, that's annoying. Do do Where is my horse? Are you dodgy do Well, well, if it ain't old Yangus. Ain't seen your moose around here for a while. Got some knocked off gear you want to get rid of, have ya? Nah, mate. Wash me hands of all that. I'm travelling round with the governor here now. But that's not why I'm here. That legless old rump, Mitch, was in here before selling you an horse and cart, wasn't he? It's just that we need them back. They belong to the gov here, see? Mitch only went and half inched them. I gave him the squeeze, and he said he sold them to you. That's why we're here. You had them pinched by Mitch. You? You must be going soft, Yangus, getting stitched up by someone like him. 
Yeah, he was here selling the awesome cards. I gave him a good price for them. So I did have them, but I don't know how to tell you this. I sold them already. Of course! You what? Who to? We need them back, desperate like. This, this is a riveting plot. I'm ready. I don't know how to tell you this either. I sold them to Red. Who's Red? You what? Red? The old artful dodger herself? You're having a giraffe and junk. Sorry, Yanga, straight up. Look, it's out of my hands now. You'll have to sort it out yourself. What's happening? What do I do? What does that mean? What do I do? Where does she live? I don't believe it. Now Red's mixed up in all this. It's the last thing I want to do right now. But we're going to have to pay her a visit. She lives in a gaff. Southwest of town. Nice little pad it is. Slap bang wallop in the middle of a lake. Mm -hmm. Come on, Gav. If we want to help the horse princess, that's where we got our head. To the southwest. Okay. Let's go. So, my dear has been stolen. Time to. So, let me just finish talking about the casino before I forget, you know. Yuji Hori is a big, he's a big gambler. He thought that, uh. Southwest. He thought that it would be great for uh, people to, um. to have to make the decision do I want to keep heading forward? At the risk of encountering a challenge I can't, like, overcome? Or should I take the safe route and then backtrack all the way back to the king so I can save my progress? Or should I keep going until I die, lose half my gold, but keep my experience and end up back to the king's there? Because that's been a trait since the first dragon quest. They're all pretty viable options, and in the beginning of the game, it's certainly, like, a no-brainer to let yourself die because you don't have that much money. But once you start to build a little bit of money, you want that big ol' axe and you can't afford it because you keep dying. The challenge is going to be a lot more difficult. So there's a lot of math that's involved in this thinking. So in the beginning of the game, you might just like, you might not want to die, actually, when you think about it. But, uh... So, yeah, that was pretty amazing, and in Dragon Quest 2, at least the Game Boy version, which is what I played. I played them all on the Game Boy. You know, it's a funny thing, on my R4, I pirated every Dragon Quest, right? I even, the first thing I did was I, I pirated, I pirated Dragon Quest Monsters Joker, right? I played it all, and I like, hey, I like that game, I like Dragon Quest Monsters, it's like Pokemon, but with, but with Dragon Ball characters. <laughs> But I'm never gonna play a real Dragon Quest game. This sucks. That's what I was thinking back then, before I knew anything. I mean, I didn't think they suck, but if you look at Dragon Quest, you don't see much on the surface. So I was totally uninterested. And uh, I was like, eh, I'm not gonna play real Dragon Quest. I just don't care. <sighs> hmm. And then, and then I was like, well, Dragon Quest 9 is coming out, so I guess I'm going to buy that. So I bought a copy for myself, and I gave my brother my R4, and I put, I put the, uh, I had an ace card actually, but whatever, a flash card, same thing, you know. I gave my brother a, the Dragon Quest 9 on the R4, and we started together, and it was a big old blast. We played for like five hours straight that day alone. As soon as we were able to, to like make our own, the rest of our party, 
Because you can make your character and then you make the rest of your party, a la Dragon Quest 3. But as soon as we can make our own characters, all we did instead was go multiplayer and like go on the adventure together. Which is pretty neat. So we. I think we did like his story. Because I, I didn't mind replaying. Because I, I went to his game, right? So we could advance the story together in his comp game. But I didn't mind replaying my copy of the game, so like, who cares? It was a really good time. We, uh... I mean, it's just, you just, it's a turn-based game, right, still? So, you just input your moves, wait for your friend or your brother or whatever to finish inputting your moves, and then you all attack it. It's pretty simple, it's intuitive, it was great, and I had a really good time. But, still, that Dragon Quest game didn't really... I liked it, but I didn't like it for why I like Dragon Quest today. That game does not have personal. It doesn't have characters like these guys here. I mean, your entire party ma party is like made by you, you know. The worlds are really, really big, and you kind of don't really know what the overarching plot is. Not really. The game starts off with you're in like this town in the sky, because you're an angel, but something bad has happened and you need to go collect like a million different items, so they send you down to go collect those, there's like these celestial fruits or something, and they tell you go collect these fruits, and basically you go to all these, throughout the, the entirety of the game, you just travel the world, I like that animation, travel the world, I went from town to town, solving some petty problem here and there, and then, uh, well, I don't know. Their problems are kind of not related, and you will never have any really, you won't really have a personal connection to any of them. Like, this game, you go to one town, right, because you're looking for Dilmagus, and then you stay because, I don't know, Angelo needs help. Whatever. What's this? I'm so intrigued. It's probably like some scary monsters down here. And Dragon Quest Nine is not really like that. You just kind of, you're just kind of looking for fruits, and then miscellaneous towns have miscellaneous problems, and those miscellaneous problems are solved. You get the fruit, you move on, and you kind of forget all about those towns. There's no characters really that you're memorable, except for the angels. And the fairy that is like always in your pocket or whatever, or your best friend, like the narrator. The only character that matters, yeah, is that fairy. Her name is Stella, and she is really cool. And you could like, you press start with Stella, and you can, she brings up the menu, and you could drag her around and stuff. And it was pretty amazing. I loved it a lot. That was a great little dancing animation. And it didn't affect any of my characters. Um... And I beat the whole thing, man. I played 100 hours of that Dragon Quest IX. And I had a blast doing it. It was pretty cool because when you, like, had different items and equip on, they were all visible in your character. So I dressed up my main character as a maid with some kitty ears, and I had my... I gave my mage... I gave my mage, um, I dressed him up in like some slime gear, so it made me look like a stack of slimes, and it was pretty cute. And then I gave my thief, I gave her, I, gave, I put her in a bikini and a thug helmet, and you know, like, Dodgy Dave has that like helmet that covers his entire face. So she was like a naked Dodgy guy, and it was pretty cool. It just got out of MP, I didn't even notice that. I should have healed her something. And, uh, and then what's my other, my other girl, the other girl character, was she, the priest? I gave her some glasses, and I dressed her up in a, uh, what are, she has glasses. I think I gave her, like, uh, yeah, like, you know, the, the bunny, the bunny suit that the, uh, waitress girls wear. I think you can dress her up to look like that, so I gave her those, and I like glasses and all. I wear glasses most of the time. For some reason, I'm not wearing them right now. Whatever. So, yo, guys, I, uh. Since I got lost in Pick'em and stuff. Look! Huh? 
It didn't happen this time. It's nighttime, but sometimes Puff Puff has a different... They don't always have doves flying in the background, so I thought that was neat at nighttime. Maybe it was in a cave or something. Anyway, there's secret animations if you use it sometimes. But in case you won't. And I'm not going to tell you what they are, so I guess let's to find out for yourself one day. So, yo, I got lost in pick. I'm looking for... I'm trying to look for uh, where Medea went, right? So I'm just going to post that... In... At the end of this video. <laughs> or... Yeah, just... If you want to... If you want to watch, stick around and watch that. I'll have, like, a slight pause. Right? And you can just... You can just keep... You can just skip ahead or whatever. And you can watch the rest. And you can watch me get lost. I don't talk about much. I don't know if it's that interesting. But I'll put it in there anyway. Hey guys, I just want to let you know that... I fast forwarded through those parts. They're not going to be at the end of this episode. That's it. You're welcome. But, um... Heck yeah, guys. I'll, I, I have so much to talk about, I guess. I feel like it, dude. I mean, I only talk about Dragon Quest IX, but right after that... Right after that, I was like, well, maybe I'll try Dragon Quest One. And it's for the Game Boy, and the R4 can play Game Boy games, so I put it on there. And I played it, and I beat it pretty fast. And I actually beat it before I even beat Dragon Quest IX, and I liked it a lot. Because I noticed then that towns, like, had things to say, and it was important to listen to what they said and such. So, I was like, I kind of like this. And then I played two right afterward, because one and two for the Game Boy are one, one cartridge. So I just pl I just continued on. I played two, and I played it all. I liked it a lot. It was really challenging, but really fun, and I liked the music a whole bunch. So I just played it a whole bunch, and it was real cool. I tried to play three, but I kind of got bored because there's too many battles. Oh wait, Red's place is right here. Wow. Let's heal up and go inside. Actually, after after I beat two, so my first rank was ever beat was one, then I beat played and beat two, and I I think I went back and I finished nine eventually. But then I was like, man, whoa, a hipster and a witch appear. Those hipsters. I don't know. I kind of want to see their animation, so I'll just do like weak attacks. Hipster. Man, this is like... This is better than Pokemon. Hipster's pointing at me. Because instead of wanting to collect all the Pokemon, I just want to see all the monsters' animations. That's what the real treat for me is. I don't need, like, collectibles. As long as I get to see everything this game has to offer me, I'm pretty happy. But I think I'm not going to be able to see all the animations the Switch has on. But I did get to hear that cool sound effect that I talked over. So that's pretty neat. I love looking at these enemies anime. That's really what Dragon Quest 8 is about. Dragon Quest 8 is in 3D, and it wants to uh, show off how 3D it can be. So that's why all the battles are slow, because it, it really wants to be just a joy to look at. And that's why I wouldn't recommend it, because, well, the battles are really slow. And it's like pretty grindy. But the rest of Dragon Quest are really well optimized not to be grindy. Well, as long, so long as you're not playing on the NES or the Super SNES, any of the Nintendo Entertainment Systems that have the their name, including Nintendo Entertainment System Dragon Quest, are pretty grindy, and you shouldn't play them really. I sure didn't. I mean, I played them a little bit, but the remakes—they're all remade on newer consoles, and they've optimized the grinding so it doesn't suck. Yes. I didn't kiss a dancing bug, but I got to see his dance. I'm pretty happy about that. If I wasn't less playing right now, I would just walk around and I'd just make all my characters defend so I can see what they're doing. That's what I want to see what they're doing. I became an archer. So after, after I beat 9, 
I didn't even talk about. I didn't even finish my gambler thing. Oh well. We're at red right now, so. I will just have to. I'll have to continue there. In the next episode. Anyway, y'all. If you want, you can go ahead and, uh. You can go ahead and stick around and you can watch me walk around being lost. But next time, we're gonna see what's up with this red lady. Get our princess back. So, thanks for watching. This has been Obaba Jag and I'm Beats. Uh, like, subscribe, follow, or not. See you guys.